So being in this field for a while, what do you think are the major cause of problem bringing people or making people homeless? Well, mostly it's the economy, you know, or the poverty level. You know, that's what that's what I would say because I think people living in poverty contributes to like it's a systemic, you know, from from some people have lived in poverty from their great 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 grandparents and it's just like um it just builds up to now we might have a, a, an eighteen year old who has known nothing but poverty and hard life because that's what his family knew and you know, I think each generation kinda gets worse. You ever read the book, um, the book um, Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome or heard the lady speak about post traumatic slave syndrome? I have had a little yeah. bit about that. And she explains it, you know, so, so well because when you think even go back to slavery, how our people were traumatized, you know, they didn't have, they weren't able to talk about it, they didn't have any therapy, so they hold all that stuff in, they're raising their children under that same, you know, um, I won't say abuse, but even if they didn't abuse their children, they've got some of that stuff inside of them that can't help but impact the way you raise your family and different things like that. Um, so that's that post-traumatic slave syndrome. And it's just like carries on from generation to generation if somebody doesn't break the cycle, you know. And so I, I just know a lot of it is poverty and, and the poverty, you know, affects people having them um, sell drugs, using drugs, and you know, drugs mess up their mind. You know, different. It's just it's just a systemic thing that a lot of different things come into play. But you know, it's a good program. I think it's it's something that's needed in our community. If we weren't here, where would all these people go? You know, we've absorbed a lot of the people that came from um, Rochester Psychiatric Center when they closed down. So a lot of people that live here or come around here, if the psych center had been open, they would qualify to be in the psych center. But we, you know, we have some of them here. Why did they close it down? Finances, you know, the government cutting back, cut back. Uh, let me ask this. Majority of the people who were in this center before they closed it down, mm -hmm. Were, uh, were they minorities? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know those statistics, but I know we have a mixture here. We have Spanish, black, white, Hispanic. We've had some Asian people that probably would have qualified to be in the center. Does the government really help them to get the necessary help they need in mental health? Since Well, the, the help is there, but when you're not take, when you won't take your medications and you're using drugs on top of that, you're not going to go to your appointments, <laughs> you know, and like they have this program called the um, ACT, um, Assertive Community Treatment. So if people won't go to their appointments and they're really mentally ill, severely mentally ill, they'll come to them and give them a shot and different, but sometimes they, if they know they're coming, they avoid them. They, they, they won't be here when they get here, you know, that kind of thing. And so in, in my mind, I would, for some of those people, I, I say, well, if you won't take your medicine and you're not doing what you need to do, you can't stay here. It's the great thing's totally different from that. So we have to have a, balance. some balance in that. So if it's somebody that I know um, can be violent without their medicine, then I say, you can't come back until you take your, get, get back on your meds. If somebody is just loud and, you know, and they're not going to harm anybody, then, you know, I might let that 